Igbo Area TV on on the Igbo. I am Azoka Ozo OJ. Please subscribe to our channel. Also click on the bell icon so you get our updates immediately it drops. Biafra. Namdekano speaks on Senator Abaribe sponsoring IPOB. Uh, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB Namdekano, has denied the claims in some corners that Senator Engineer Abaribe is sponsoring his group, the IPOB. During his live broadcast on Radio Biafra on Sunday, December 8th, when he spoke on the maltreatment of Omoyele Sowere by officials of DSS and the abuse of human rights in Nigeria, Namdekano disclosed that he or the organization IPOB was in no way getting support from Abaribe or any leader from the Southeast region. He maintained that they have not received any form of money or support from Abaribe, just that he loves Abaribe because he speaks the truth. Remember, Senator Abaribe was among those who stood shorties for him in the Federal High Court in Abuja on April 25, 2017. Justice Bintanyako, who presided over the matter at the time, granted Kano bail on health grants after part of the charges filed against him and three others were struck out by the courts. Uh, the conditions for the bills that time was that he shouldn't be seen in a crowd of more than 10 persons and he shouldn't grant press interviews. Earlier this year, Kano said that he would remain grateful to all his shorties for standing by him all through his travels, trials, and tribulations. He said that in a time that is so hard for him, this guy stood for him. Recording his appreciation, Kano berated Igbo leaders for not supporting IPOB, adding that Abaribe's support for his group is a, the reason. Senator can never be attacked like uh, those Ekuremado and Rotimi Ameshi. Uh, said he can't face such public embarrassment like that of Ameshi and Ekuremado. He said, have you seen anybody trouble Abaribe? He said, touch Abaribe and you will see. He has not given it not a dime, but he speaks the truth. And I think the IPOB leader is trying to make a clarification. Because the country is swinging into what we call a time of impunity and lawlessness. You see what is happening to Sowere? Sowere has been granted bail. In fact, Sowere wasn't to stay in the DSS news or the DSS camp or whatsoever for more than 45 days. But in a way, they manipulated things. They did things the way they like. They don't respect court orders. He has stayed up to 90 days with the DSS. Now, he was released shortly in what looks like a Gestapo manner, I don't know, or commando style act mission, they swung on him in the court again. They took him until foreign bodies, U.S. senators, started raising alarm and threatening sanctions on Nigeria. So I think the reason the IPOB leader wants to make it clear that he has never received support from Abaribe so that no one will swing on him. Before you know it, like the president said, they are not aware of what DSS did to Showare, but then that DSS had the right to act when they see something that is a kind of threat to the country. So he has to clear Abaribe because DSS could just act in a way. You know, the DSS here, which is supposed to be an independent body, is manipulated by the executive. They are used against anyone that is an opposition. If you go to countries like U.S. and the rest developed world, even in South Africa here, these bodies like that are not used by the president. They can even probe the president. But here, they are being manipulated against those who appear threat to the government, threat to the regime. That is what happens here. So, the leader of the IPOB, Mazen Namdekano, has to make it clear he has not been receiving support, being that IPOB is also proscribed. Anyone giving them support will be looked like somebody that is like an enemy of the state, and DSS can just ruffle the person. That's the kind of security service we have in Nigeria here. It's like the government promoted them by what they said, that they have the power to act when they see anything that is that posed a threat. Somehow, yes, but is DSS really independent? No. They are being used. Thank God we had a story has been released, finally. Oh, we don't know what will happen tomorrow. Uh, these people are full of surprises nowadays. Abia, Ibazuban street trading, threatens sanction. 
The governor of Abia State, Dr. Okezi Bazo, has placed a ban, erection of shops, tents, or any other structure for the purpose of trading around the Ari Area International Market in Aba, the commercial nerve center of the state. Uh, this was coming after the slogan of street traders around the area by the Ministry of Trade and Investment. They are trying to restore sanity to the state and Aba Metropolis. According to them, no form of street trading will be conducted around that area, under whatsoever guise. So anyone trying to hustle around that area should desist. It is banned. Already the security agencies have been directed to enforce that law. He advised those who wish to continue doing business to go into the market and do it. Now, but there is a question. You know, we discussed something like this during our Milo's Corner on Igbo Red TV. Uh, the elder talked about something like this. He said, we want our place to look like London, Italy, the best cities in the world. But we have to realize there are sacrifices that were done. Those places didn't just look like that. Certain things had to happen. You can't just uh, wake up one morning and start fixing your place, making it fine like London. No, London did certain other things. If you do the right things, even the street workers ordinarily will leave the streets. When their business grow, they will leave the streets. Somebody pushes barrow, selling all kind of provisions. It comes to a point he grows, he looks for shop. He will continue pushing the barrow. So, when governments want to do such a thing, they have to put certain other things in place. Somebody can say, okay, we have fixed the market. What is the cost of this market? Can the ordinary people afford it? A lot of these guys cannot afford to pay for those shops you are talking about. You place the shop at a height that they can't afford. Now you chase them out of the streets. That is not to say we condone any form of evil, no. We don't condone stealing or whatever. We don't con we, we not support it. But then, the government is part of the problem. It's just like um, removing subsidy from petrol. You have to do other things to cushion the effect. You can't just, you know, there has to be something to check it. You can't just wake up and put up something and impose on people and you want them to immediately follow without working on the other side to see that things go fine. You want Abba to look like London. Yes, it's good for Abba. Abba needs clean up first. That is what Abba needs now. It's not clearing street traders. No. Abba needs clean up. Clean up Abba first. If you clean up Abba, then other things follows. Breaking. Wanted Namdekano's lawyer, a Geofor Rights National Assembly, demands investigation into killings at his home. It was reported that a clash in his home in Orefite, Ekusigo local government area of Anambra State, on December 2, 2019, led to the killing of three of his kinsmen and two officers of the police. The IPOB lawyer, a Geofor, who is not just only representing IPOB, but the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdekano, was recently declared wanted by the Nigerian police force. But Ejofo has written to the National Assembly over the killings that occurred at his home during an invasion by the police. According to reports, a clash in his home in Olorifi, the Ekusigo local government of Anambra, led to the killing of three of his kinsmen and two police officers. Following the incident, the Anambra Police Command declared him wanted and even asked the public to help get him anywhere he's hiding. From his hideout, he has sent letter to the National Assembly. After having denied involvement in the matter, and he's urging the lawmakers to intervene in the matter in order to uncover all hidden facts. According to him, there are certain hidden things that we are yet to know. So, he's imploring the National Assembly to come in to the matter. He explained in the letter that he was on his way to the state command when he received a call on the attack in his house. He also denied all allegations against him by the police. The letter reads partly, At about 6 a.m., I spoke with the ACP and assured him of my availability between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. in his office. The Trigger Happy Police met this same youth during the first visit and they never bounced on the policeman. If they didn't attack the policemen during the first invasion, why would they attack them during the second? 
the shooting at everything in sight started during the second visit because they were convinced i was at home the style was a clear modus to kill me the lawyer alleged through his letter to the house of assembly that there was a clear plan to take his life and i, I think he was lucky not to have been around according to him he has been visiting the police he sees the police all the time while defending IPOB, he meets with the police. So why would he be running away from meeting the police? But for the sake of what happened and understanding that he was a target at that moment, he has to flee. And if it were you, what will you do? When you have seen what is on ground and you know these people are out for you. One day, if it's me, Osondo, you know what is called Osondo? Sometimes you have to run away, you take cover. So you have to be careful. Thanks for watching Igbo Area TV. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also click the bell icon. Like our Facebook page. Join our Facebook group. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Bye for now.